All right, now, let's see, let's see here. Magazines are fast. No, no. Maybe, maybe, no. I need a book. I need to find one of these. These these ones are completely backwards. Why do I have them like that? I don't know. Uh, maybe, no, this one isn't going to work. No, 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 no. Hmm. Mm. Viewpoints critical. Nah. Short story is not exactly. Uh, no, no, no. The Parafaith War. And it's sort of sequel the Ethos effect. Maybe Adiam Adiamant? I don't even know how to pronounce that. No. Oh, and then there's all of the recluse books. So very many of them. I just, I don't know. I want to, I want to find something topical, a book that can be kind of talked about. But it's so hard to decide. I mean, look at them all, and they're all by the same man. <sighs> well, I guess there's nothing for it. I'm just gonna have to uh, do it this way. Hello, and welcome to chapter 5 of book 1 of You Should Be Reading. Uh, I wanted to talk today about a book. I wanted to find a book that I could talk about that was kind of topical in a way to some things going on in the world right now. Um, as I mentioned in my very first video, I am Canadian, uh, there has been some trouble here in a couple of Canadian city, cities with uh, attacks, uh, shootings that I believe have been labeled as terrorist attacks. Um, there are other events happening in my own city uh, of a, not exactly a violent nature, but a morally bankrupt nature, I will say, uh, dealing closely with uh, Remembrance Day, which is coming up very soon. There's been uh, people stealing the money that is being raised by the Poppy Foundation, which many of you may or may not know, uh, sells poppies for whatever you want to donate. You can get a poppy. This has been happening. There's also been something that's been going on in the world uh, as a person who is very much involved in uh, video games, role-playing games, uh, books, naturally, uh, and other things that could be considered, you know, geeky or nerdy. Um, there's been this thing called Gamergate, which I heard about a couple months ago. I've heard about this, this thing very vaguely. I haven't really delved too much into it. Uh, the more I've heard about it and, and done some reading on it, uh, the more I've kind of wanted to say something about it. But, in the other hand, I didn't want to say something about it because apparently some of these people are... Some of the people that may or may not be connected to whatever this movement is, if it's even a movement, have been attacked and... I mean, that sort of thing is kind of frightening and disheartening, both there with these ISIS terrorist attacks, with this poppy thief stealing money that's meant to be put towards the veterans, towards a good cause, and all this and that. And it, it just makes me concerned. It makes me sad for the world. Because... I really want to believe in the good nature in everybody, even though I know that that is not the case. There are, not everybody is good. Not everybody can be good 
for whatever reason. Whether it's their nature, whether it's their nurture, I don't know. That's not exactly what I'm here to talk about. Uh, this is just, all of this was going on, and it's been on my mind a lot. So I've been thinking, I wanted to do, I wanted to look at a book that might have something to say towards the general scope of this. But I kept turning back to one author, uh, Ellie Modisit Jr. Uh, you can see his name here, maybe. I think I'll put it. Yeah, here. Uh, he is an author that I have read a great many books. You saw the huge pile of them there just a little bit ago. I own currently 49 of his books. No, sorry, I lie. I have read 49 of his books. I own 54 of them. He has written over 70, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think it's close to 70 novels he has written over the past 40 years. The man is one of the most prolific authors that I know of, one of my favorite authors. And I look to his books because he deals a lot with war, with the consequences of cultures with strong religious ideals and their reactions and interactions with cultures that do not have such strong religious ideals. There's a lot of that meshing together and the conflict that comes about in it. He talks a lot about that in a great many of his books. And when I was looking, I couldn't really find one book to pick. I, I couldn't pick one because there's so many of them that he talks about it. So many of them are, are poignant and, and apt and, and really interesting. The man, the man has been writing for a very, very long time. I believe, uh, yes, his first story was published in 1973, and it's 2014 now. So 41 years he's been writing. That's a long time. Four decades. So many words. And he's still going. He's still writing. I think something like he's currently working on two books right now? One of them has a manuscript already, like just a first draft manuscript is in, and another one is almost ready. It's going to be coming out next year. Um, I'm looking forward to anything new by him. I'm currently about 16, 15, 16, 17. I, I can't remember the exact number. But that's about how many books of his I have left to buy and find. And then I'll have everything that he has written. And I'll read them all. <clears throat> but, getting back on topic, because I'm rambling here. Uh, terribly sorry. When Mr. Modisett talks about war in his book, when he deals with the subject of war, he doesn't romanticize it. He doesn't build it up as being this glamorous thing where... A, a stronger opponent achieves a righteous victory over some evil force or whatever. Even if there is good triumphing over evil in his books, and there is some of that, there's definitely, he has a clear demarcation when it comes to evil in his stories. Uh, you can tell that the evil force is going, is, is evil. There's no question about it. They are evil, evil, evil. Now, whether this is because of their ideals, whether this is because of their own selfishness, whether this is because of their own lust for power, their own lust for control, or whatever the reason, there's quite a lot of different reasons for why evil is evil. Why, they, why the villains of his pieces do what they do. Uh, there's always a reason for everything. 
whether or not he goes into that is another matter. Some books he doesn't. Some books you, you never really see the point of view of the, the villains. Some of his books you only see it from the hero's perspective, the quote-unquote good guys. But whether or not he delves into it, there's always that reasoning there for why they're doing what they're doing. But, uh, where was I? Uh, yes. But no matter the, no matter the reasoning why, this, this, this whole course of, of war, this fighting, people dying, people trying to win over one side over the other. As I said, it's, it's never romanticized by the author. The characters, some of the characters, may want to, to do this. They may be looking to, to find glory in, in battle. They may be willing to sacrifice hundreds or thousands of men simply to make themselves look good. This can happen in a character. But the author himself never... You never get the sense that he, as a writer, is is romanticizing this, that he as a writer is uh, giving his stamp of approval on any of these, of, of one person, one religion, one ideology forcing themselves on another, one superior force forcing themselves on another, enslaving another. You, you never get that sense from him. Uh, and this leads right into uh, another of the kind of topical things, as I mentioned, um, with the whole Gamergate thing, uh, there's a big, big issue here, I know, going on with that, about, I think, women in games journalism or in games, uh, people have been threatened, women have been threatened, men have been threatened, uh, public information has been leaked, all of this and that. I'm not sure of all the details. I know these things have happened because it's been in the news as this has happened and so on and so forth. But regardless of that, this is just something, as I said, it, it was on my, on my mind and he sort of deals with this in his books, uh, in some of them, where you will have certain cultures where uh, women are treated as uh, second-class citizens, in a manner of speaking. Uh, he deals with the subjects of not only uh, misogyny, but uh, misandry as well, because some of his books have a very patriarchal society where the men rule and the women are subservient. And then he has ones with a matriarchal society where the women are the ones in power and the men are simply there as subservient second-class citizens only good for breeding and making more women. Amazonian, in a way. Uh, he has both of these concepts in some of his books. But you never get the sense from his writing that he is approving either of them. This is simply a framework for which he wants to tell a particular story around. Uh, or this area of the story has this particular culture where whoever is the hero, and it may be a first-person perspective or maybe a third-person perspective. Usually third-person perspective is where he tends to write in, though there are a couple where he does first-person. But usually the, the heroes tend to uh, encounter different cultures uh, and seeing things from their perspective. Uh, usually... Not always, but usually, uh, I'd say a good 85% of his heroes tend to be fairly open-minded in a way. Uh, a lot of his heroes tend to be slow learners. They tend to take a little bit of a, a little bit of beating to get those lessons hammered in. Uh, and it's usually a drawn-out process over the course of the books where... Where they where they learn, either usually the hard way, <laughs> but 
it's it's really amazing. I can't recommend him enough. If any of you are out there, you want to, and you want to read some books, read some Ellie Modisette Jr. books. Um, I will mention one little thing. He does have the tendency, uh, and I'm not saying this as a bad thing or a criticism. I'm probably way too much of a fanboy of his to really criticize his work. But a lot of his work tends to follow a very similar a vein. Uh, it can have where you could say if you've read one Ellie Modisette book, you've read almost all of them. Uh, even if one of them is a fantasy novel and one of them is a sci-fi novel, there, there's a similar progression to a lot of them, uh, similar circumstances. Uh, a lot of the heroes tend to wonder and question whether or not the use of force to gain to gain a goal to uh, accomplish a task to protect what they're trying to protect to to save their own way of life or the way of life of their people they wonder if if a use of force use of greater and greater force in order to do this is the only way it's going to happen uh, you get the distinct impression from that that Mr. Modisett really, like myself, I think, is a proponent of peace. He is a man who believes in that peaceful uh, coexistence should be able to be obtained if only people would listen, if only people would understand and talk to each other and be a little more accepting of each other uh, then it could happen I don't know it's it may be wishful thinking on my part it may be wishful thinking on his part but he really is an amazing author um, a couple other points I'm going to hit uh, not exactly as topical as the conversation has been up till this point. Um, not as serious, perhaps. But Mr. Modisett is a... He's an author that is very big on consequences as well. In a lot of his work, you can find characters doing things. Uh, they, will be, they will use their uh, abilities, their powers, their magic, their nanotechnology whatever to to accomplish a task they, they'll stop someone from doing something or or they'll stop an invading army from from doing and in in destroying a place and the end result will be uh, catastrophic in a way um, one of his biggest uh, series the the recluse saga is currently at I think 18. I had 18 books of it, and I think there's two more coming out that he's working on, which should be interesting to see. And all of them deal with a very, with a magic system that is based on order versus chaos. And you have mages, mages, uh, who can use uh, order, who can, they tend to be very, very regimented, very very strict in how they, they do things. They do things properly the first time. Uh, you have chaos mages who tend to be the attack mages. They're the ones that can throw fireballs around. The interesting thing is with that, um, the order mages, the color associated with order is black, and the color associated with chaos is white, which I believe... Mr. Modisett may correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that it is it comes from the fact of light. That all of the colors of the spectrum of light, when you put all of them together, you get white. And the absence of light is black. And chaos is all colors. It's interesting how that happens. But, as I was saying, consequences. 
uh, in one of the recluse books, the second one, uh, there is a moment when, because the second one is all about the founding of the island of recluse, which you only, which you first see in the first book. But in the second book, this island being founded is is a desert isle. There's like nothing on it. There's barely any sustainable soil, barely any weather patterns. It's hot. It's arid. It's it's practically unlivable. And one of the the two main characters in that book is a weather mage and uses his magic to literally shift the weather to get rain on this island. And in doing so, causes a famine and a drought on the main continent nearby. That That's where I first realized that he was an author, all about consequences. Everything you do has a consequence in real life and in his books. Nothing, nothing happens for free. Nothing happens without a cause and an effect. And he's very careful to tie it all together in, in a very realistic, a very, as realistic as magic and science fiction can be. But he... He writes what he knows, and he knows quite a lot. Uh, according to his biography, he's been, uh, let's see here, a delivery boy, a lifeguard, an unpaid radio disc jockey, a U.S. Navy pilot. A lot of his characters, especially in the science fiction books, tend to be pilots. Um, a market research analyst, a real estate agent, director of research for a political campaign, Legislative Assistant and Staff Director for a U.S. Congressman. Director of Legislation and Congressional Relations for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. A Consultant on Environmental, Regulatory, and Communications Issues. A College Lecturer and a Writer in Residence. He not only writes novels, has published technical studies, articles, columns, poetry, and a number of science fiction stories, etc., etc., He's done a lot of that, and he takes all of those life experiences that he has learned, and he uses them in his books. He has people, characters in his books in medieval times, when you expect there to be all kinds of, you know, battles and monsters and magic and sword fights and, and massive armies battling on the field and all this and that. You expect that, and he has all that. But he also has rulers that are concerned about the economy of their kingdoms, about how much a war is going to cost, about how he's going to feed his army, the logistics of armies moving, moving large armies large distances. He ties all this together. He uses all of that to make his books as real as possible while still being fantasy. And it is a treat. An absolute treat to read any of his books. So if any of you out there are thinking about maybe getting a new a new book, looking for a new author to read, uh, maybe some of you have read some of his stuff, but maybe put them aside because you didn't want to read more. Maybe you thought, you know, oh well, I've read a few of his books and they all seem the same. Well, there are similarities. They are not all the same. Everyone has a different story. Each main character, each main characters, they each have their own story to tell, their own individual individual I hate to use the word story again, but it is. It's a, they each have their own individual story to impart on you, the reader. And there are stories that he has wanted to tell. Stories he felt the need to tell to get out there in the world. And as any writer, I do writing myself. Not, not even remotely near any of the authors out there that I read. But any author, any writer, wants to have their work read. Wants to have it appreciated for what it is. So, if any of you out there 
are looking for anything new, anything interesting, I would suggest going to a new, going to any bookstore, go to a used bookstore. Look around for Ellie Modisett Jr. Page through some of his stuff to see if you might like it. See if something catches your eye. And buy it. Take it home. Read it. Enjoy it. It is worth the time. It is worth the effort to do this. And as much as I would love to read one of Ellie Modisett Jr.'s works to you, being so close as it is to Remembrance Day, I'm going to read something else. So this week, you should be reading anything by Ellie Modisett Jr. And I'm going to leave you with this. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amidst the guns below, we are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' fields.